What is up, guys? It is your boy Speed here, back with the mid lane tier list. We're gonna be going from broken tier, obviously that's the best tier, to A to B to C, and of course to the dog shark tier, where we'll be talking about, you know, what heroes you should be picking, why I'll give you my thoughts very briefly so you guys can just understand the current meta, what's going on, and let's hop right into it after you like the video, because if you don't like the video, I'll break your legs and therefore you can hop right into the video. And signing up to the GameLeap.com website where I'm posting videos every single day, every single day, literally every single day, trying to tell you guys how to get good at Dota. Like, you know, you know, I played a game, I've played it for a while, I reached 7.5 KMMR, and I'm here to tell you exactly how you can get to that rank as well. Well, over there, and in the link down below. All right, let's start off with the broken tier list. So I have two heroes only in here, and I do want to say that I think one of them is situational, one isn't. So the first one that is situational is Broodmother. The reason why I had to put Broodmother at pretty freaking high is just because of the hero's general success within high MMR games. Now, you could say, uh, Speed, isn't this hero on in terms of trends at a 50% win rate? And the answer is absolutely yes. But I think the current pace of Dota and how the map is set up and how neutral items work, you know, and the fact that you need someone to jungle and get them quickly for your team, all of this, I think, favors Brood. And therefore, if you pick Brood in the right games at the right time, I mean, not that this hasn't been the case for a long time, right? Picking Brood into niche games where you have a favorable matchup and the enemy team has no AOE to control you or, or to deal with your spiders, you win. But let's talk about Brood's changes very briefly. So what happened to Brood is that Brood got 0.4 agility gain at all levels, which is one of the highest agility gain increases for any hero in the patch, and it's on an agility hero. Incapacitating Bite was buffed by 4%, Spawn Spiderlings got 40 more HP but lost magic resistance. And these are the changes. Right? So overall, I mean, Brood wasn't crazy buffed, but I really do think that the meta favors this character quite a bit. And if you learn how to pick Brood in the right games, micro the spider links quicker, and you hardcore flash farm, right? I specifically mean this, you flash farm. Please don't play Brood as a ganker. Please copy a pro and you'll win. And to be clear, the reason why I definitely think this is the hero currently has a 57% win rate on Dota 2 Pro Tracker. Now let's talk about Magnus, and this hero is widely regarded as one of the stronger heroes of the patch just because of the pacing of the game and the recent buffs that he got. And the hero is particularly good as a mid laner as Empower was buffed from 25% in max to 32%. Meaning when you max out Empower, which you'll be doing in the laning stage, you just flash farm way too fast. It's it's pretty freaking dumb. You buy an Echo Saber, BKB, Blink Dagger, or Echo Blink, BKB, then like a Daedalus, and you kind of just one shot everyone. It's freaking dumb. It really is. And you combine it with, you know, heroes like TB and PA or the current Jug and whew, the damage is ridiculous. Also, Magnus loses very little lanes. He gets neutral items. So big fan of Magnus right now. And I definitely think he's broken. Next up, let's get into the A tier. And I know this might be surprising for people to hear. Uh, for the longest time in a while, I am putting Invoker in A. Now, is this up for interpretation? Yes. I think you have to be a very good Invoker player to make the hero work. I do think you have to copy the new builds. I recommend you go watch someone like Topson. However, if you go this sort of like phase drums or drum space build where you go kind of like a Quas Wex into an Exhort mix, I think the hero is pretty good. I do think it's relatively back. However, you need to go watch. Please, please, please do not hop in a ranked. Go Exhort. Buy a Midas that you get at 21 minutes into the game and feed. You need to go watch some games or at least play some unranked. The hero is very hard, but a 49% win rate on Invoker, in my opinion, is pretty good. Because when anyone plays him who isn't a spammer, he'll generally lose, right? The hero having a, a kind of like an even win rate means he's not too bad. Go try out the new builds. I think they're pretty legit. Next up, we have Storm Spirit. And I think Storm Spirit, just right now with the Orchid and Bloodstone changes, is in a pretty good spot. Now, the Bloodstone changes didn't heavily favor Storm. But he did get a heavy buff recently to his ultimate, and I think the Orchid changes are obviously really, really good for the hero. There's no denying that. I mean, think about it. A right clicker that needs mana, there's no better hero for Orchid than Storm Spirit. Maybe you could argue Quap, but like, eh, even that. I, I, Storm is pretty dirty. So yeah, the hero's in a good spot right now. I think it's better than it ever has been in quite a while, at least within the last few months. So yeah, give him a try. Next up, we have Zeus. Zeus isn't necessarily crazy good in high MMR games, but I think for your average pub, the hero is still a 55% win rate hero. And therefore, if you want a hero that's simple to play, or you're a player that isn't necessarily really good at mid, Zeus is good, right? He's a very player friendly hero. He doesn't require insane mechanics. And therefore, if you're 0 to 4k MMR, picking Zeus is often a very good option. 
Next up is Arc Warden, and I think after all of his changes, Arc Warden is in a good spot where Arc Warden just kind of dominates the later stages of the game. Also, the Midas buffs have helped them out a lot. If you do end up going that item build, it is pretty freaking good. Uh, obviously, the changes to the item and it being buffed a little bit in terms of the amount of XP it gives and the overall cost makes the item much better. Next up, we have Clinks. I'm not going to talk about Clinks. You guys know why Clinks is good. Quop. Same thing, the hero's win rate is actually pretty low on Dota buff, but if you get a good Orchid timing, you know you're gonna slay on this hero and run over the enemy team. It's been like that for a while. I, I frankly don't know how this hero's win rate is 49%. I feel like it should be higher. Maybe I'm missing something. You guys can let me know in the comments why does Quap have a low win rate? Like it's like 49% overall games. Maybe people are just dumb or they overcommit with Blink. That's probably what it is. The hero just doesn't flash farm that fast naturally. And it dies fairly easily if you don't, you know, go the right items, if you're too greedy, which I feel like people are. They go like, orc it into MKB. I I've seen that stuff go on just so bad. Uh, guys, come on. Getting into the B tier, we have Kunga number one. Kunga's win rate is not too special, but the hero has been reliable for a long time and always really will be. Its combination of a reliable inning stage and reliable ganking makes Kunga one of those heroes that if you played a lot, uh, an, an average hero, you know, like, it's just the definition of a BT hero. Kunka, I don't think, will ever really be dumpster tier. If it is, I'll be shocked, because its kit just kind of enables it to be solid. It's just how it is. You farm fast, you gank easily. The only issue with the hero is that it doesn't necessarily scale insanely well, especially considering people look at this hero wrong. The way you need to look at Kunka is go early game items, like Armlet Halberd first with one Embracers, like even this double Bracer build is really good on Kunka right now, go double Bracer, and then go into these smaller items, take over the early game, take over the first 25 minutes of the match, then you can scale into items such as the ACs after you have your like Armlet Halberd BKB, right, or Drums Halberd BKB, something like that, then go into the data list, right, don't do it the other way around, please, you're gonna feed. Next up, Ember and Void Spirit. I'm combining them together only because I think these heroes are in the same position right now. If you are bad mechanically at them, you're going to feed most of the games. However, if you're good at them, you can pop off, go 20-0, and, and make the enemy team want to kill themselves. Next up is Necrophos. The hero is just a 52% win rate hero in your average pub. Its ability to sustain in the lane really trumps anyone. You guys have probably heard this term before, but the Necrophos is really the ranged version of Timbersaw. Right, it's a ranged version of Timber Saw, and it doesn't have a high skill ceiling like Timber does. Right, it's not hard to play. Timber is brutally difficult to play. Necro, very easy. You cast your Q, you take that point in Shroud. You guys know how I feel, right? You're banned from the channel if you don't take Shroud. In the mid lane, it's actually okay though. <laughs> yeah, just to be clear, guys, you don't have to take Shroud at level four in the mid lane, only because it's less likely you're gonna get ganked. If you do, you're much closer to the tower, so you're, you know, it's it's easier. Still, I think an early point in Shroud if you think the enemy team threatens you is pretty freaking good. Next up is Ricky. I know you're like, Speed, what? Why is Ricky on here? I probably did forget some other mid hero that I'm gonna get flamed about, but Ricky, I don't, man, this hero's good. I'm just gonna say it. Ricky's good. Mirana. Mirana's just a B tier hero and always will be. Like, dude, if, if Mirana and Kunka, they kind of like float this boat of like, occasionally they're like really good, but for the most part, they're just like a stun with mobility and a nuke. It's like, all right. Wind Ranger. Yeah, I mean, I think the MKB changes have hurt Wind Ranger a lot. Her being able to get a really early MKB really benefited the hero, and the changes giving MKB attack speed and more gold hurt Wind Ranger the most, because she doesn't need the attack speed, right? So the old MKB, while it wasn't as good on other heroes, it was really good on Wind Ranger, right? It was really, really good on Wind Ranger. So all these nerfs to this item have hurt her a lot. It delays her later BKB timing that, frankly, people don't even go, and therefore the hero's win rate has kind of plummeted a bit. But, eh, not a bad hero. Alchemist, I think he fits this meta, but he can also get run over by a lot of the current meta heroes, such as the Magnuses and the Storms and uh, Klinks and Quap. They can just kind of bully him out of lane, so you have to be careful about what you pick Alkin to. Next up is Venge. I've been saying for a while that I think this hero is good. It has been changed quite a bit, though, and I still think it's solid, but not as good as you might think. Pugna. Pugna kind of, like, blasts people. But he's nothing special right now. He's not in like a great place, but he's not in a bad place. After all the nether ward changes, the hero slowly and slowly fell off from that broken place when he threw up a level 1 nether ward and you couldn't lane. That was just dumb. Next up, Pango Go Burr. Uh, Pango's B tier. Death Prophet. You know, I haven't actually been seeing too much of this hero. It was just in a pretty broken place about a few months ago. Ever since like Siphon was good and then they gave her like 18 movement speed buffs in a row and then Siphon buffs and then... Q buffs and uh, Death Prophet all of a sudden became the best hero in Dota where you could play it in any lane, but now it's just not like that. And finally, the last B hero is Nature's Prophet mid lane. This is a very common pro mid lane hero. 
that I think is extremely good still. Its ability to take over the tempo of the match and get a, a million denies in the laning stage if played properly or, or you know, the, your opponent doesn't know what to do against you, which is very common in any game that isn't 4k or above. Just being honest, what I've seen, you can hate me. Hashtag I hate speed in the comment section down below because I know we all do, especially Reddit. Don't worry, I love you guys though. But yeah, Prophet just kind of controls the tempo of the game. Next up, let's get into the C tier. And honestly, I do want to say that a lot of these heroes, if picked in the right scenario, can be B or A. And that's like the thing you want to do want to consider before we move on to the next hero. If you pick the hero in the right position, it will do well. Just don't don't be like, oh my god, my team picked a Monkey King and it's in speed C tier. I can't even win. Like, I hate that mentality. The reason I give this tier list is to give you a general guide of what's currently good, but you still need to adjust these heroes for matchups and, and your, your allies, right? You can't pick Alk with a Wraith King safe lane and expect to win the early game in 10 minutes. Can you still win with those heroes? Yes, once again, please don't say you lose off draft. I hate people who do that. It's not that I hate you as a person. I, I just feel bad that people ruin games because they're like, oh my god, we're so greedy. If you are good at split pushing and taking dangerous farm and you have three other cores, you'll win the game. All right, let's move on. C tier A. So the first hero for C tier is TA. The hero farms really fast and is just kind of solid, but after a lot of nerfs in a row, the hero has been pushed onto the C tier. Viper. Viper just doesn't scale as well as you would hope. That's kind of like always the issue with Viper. And ever since they made the mana on his Q go to 25, he's been kind of... DK. DK, I don't know. I, I think it's like all the status resist changes and like HP regen changes kind of hurt him. Huskar. Same thing with Huskar. Like... Not being able to go this Giga Status Resist hurts him quite a bit, right? The Halberd and the Satanic build was dirty on Huskar, but now that that's kind of been removed, he's much worse than what he was. Medusa. Medusa farms fast, but I liked her when she could buy like MKB and such. Now you kind of can't, so I feel like this hero should be favored in this meta, but uh, for some reason, she just isn't. Every single time I watch a Medusa and guess the rank, by the way, you always have your mana shields off. Can you guys just turn it on? Like, why is it off? Leave it on. Just leave it on. Next up is Meepow, and I think Meepow is pretty good. I'll spare your ears. I'll spare your ears. It's fine. <laughs> I'll spare him. But Meepow, eh, he's just nerfed. Puck. Who picks Puck? Monkey King. The three armor Monkey King. Honestly, I feel like if you pick this hero in the right scenario, three armor Monkey King is pretty freaking good in lane. But what you want to do is use the Jingu to deny creeps. To be clear, like slowly build up Jingu, get it, deny creeps. Next up, we have Linda. Uh, Linda is. I mean, she's decent, right? She's pretty hot. Not in terms of uh, attractiveness, you know, just like literal temperature. In this meta, I just think she dies too easily. She doesn't scale as well as other heroes. It's just a very clunky hero to play. And unless you're very good at positioning and you understand every nuance of dominating in the laning stage with Lina, I think you're going to have a hard time winning matches. Like, can you stomp with this hero? Yeah, I actually gained a lot of MMR with Lina from when I was around 3 to 4k because what I learned how to do is literally burn my entire mana pool, take points in E, and dominate the laning stage. And finally is Leshrac. I didn't want to put this hero in doggy tier, even though like his winner is that bad, it really is that bad. I didn't want to put him in dog tier because if you really understand Leshrac, like the ins and outs and how to position on him, he'll do well. The problem is Leshrac, in my opinion, is like a top five hardest hero to play. And I mean that. A lot of people are going to say like, Speed, what are you talking about? Like, what about, what about, what about Meepo and, uh, what about Invoker and you, how could you put him even close to this here? It's not that hard to position with Invoker. All your spells are long range, right? Still, you're going to get jumped against anyone decent and insta die, which is why, I mean, you got to be careful. You got to go to like this drums into like BKB build, but Leshrac, you got to get in melee range and you're squishy and you got to hit timings and you have to scale and you have to learn how to split push and go for solo kills, which is a very difficult skill to learn in Dota. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that I'm harping on a C tier hero so much, but that's that's my opinion. I wanted to explain. Now let's get into the dog shark tier or dog sweet tier. What you know, not too good, not too good. Pudge, <laughs> I'm literally gonna every tier list I'm gonna make, he's gonna be here. Oh Pudge, I can't believe you're in the dog tier again. That's crazy. I actually think in like next patch, Pudge is gonna get a big buff. I really do believe this. Pudge is gonna get a huge buff, and then all of a sudden, bada bing, bada boom, best hero of the patch. Guarantee it. Pudge is gonna be in broken tier in about a month. Quote me on that. If I get it wrong, free game leap sub to myself. Get prey. Next up is Odie. I thought the buffs would make him much better. They have made him slightly better. And I feel like once again, if you... No, no. Don't pick Odie. He just farms so slow. I, I, I don't know what you do as Odie. Like, what? what is Odie right now? I don't know. I don't even know what this hero does. Like, does it farm fast? Does it gank? Does it even win lane? Like, what does it do? And finally is your mom. That's right. I just called your mom dog tier. 
<laughs> That's where we're gonna end the video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, leave a comment down below if I forgot any mid heroes. I know I do this all the time. Like, I guess you could put Legion in this list. Maybe you've been playing a lot of Crystal Maiden mid and you think it's broken tier, but I forgot to put it in. You can let me know. I don't know. Also, I did not put Bloodseeker in here. I know you guys are probably disturbed. If I had to pick a tier for Bloodseeker though, it would definitely be the broken tier. And that's where we're going to end the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And peace. Hey guys, uh, do you also want more content from me and other Game League creators that are going to help you get to the next rank easily? Well, 50% off right now is the deal we can offer. All right, 50% off. As long as you click the link down below, you're going to get that part of our summer sale. Right, just go over there. You're going to see the 50% off. Sign up. It's an incredible deal. I've been putting in more work than ever on this website. I think the content is going to help you guys get to the next level faster than ever. And yeah, I hope to see you there. If you're unsure about it, hey, message me on Discord. Say speed. Why should I sign up for the Game Leap website? I swear I know a lot of you guys <laughs> just troll me about this. But nah, ask me. I'll talk to you. Go sign up for the website. It's a blast. And we're going to have a good time this summer.